Hi everyone, thank you for coming today. This is Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook and you are watching Tuesday with Tammy and Tom. Tom's actually behind the camera at the moment getting things set up, but he's gonna come and join me over here. So we try to go live on Tuesdays on our YouTube channel so that we can talk to you about our whole food plant-based lifestyle. So we've been getting a lot of questions lately about what do you make when you entertain or what do you make for the holidays? So today, that's what we're going to cover. Here's Tom. Hello. So Tom is going to be monitoring, mo Mo ooh, moderating, moderating the chat. <laughs> moderating the chat so you can answer questions. I'm going to show you what we have made today and talk about different things that we do when we're entertaining. But if you have questions at the end, we're going to do a Q&A. And so we hope that we can relieve a little bit of stress for you for holiday or entertaining for company and cooking for people who eat perhaps the standard American diet. So we have a mixed family. So some of our extended family eats the standard American diet and some of our family eat the same way that we do. So we're very familiar with the stress, especially when you first start eating this way of what to make, you know, what is going to appeal to a lot of different people. So I want to show you what we've made today. And truthfully, I felt like I was cooking for company today because we decided instead of just talking to you about the things that we like to make, we would actually make a lot of it so that we could show you. Um, I just, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, I think that's absolutely true. So this menu could work for a lot of different occasions. It would work for Thanksgiving. It would work for Christmas. It would work for New Year's Eve. It works for Easter. It's great for Father's Day or Mother's Day or birthday parties. I mean, it's pretty well received by everyone, whether they eat plant-based or not, because my theory is delicious food is delicious food whether it's healthy or plant-based, right? If the flavor is great, if it's pretty looking, then there is nothing to worry about. Did you just bump the tripod? I just saw everything shake. Yeah. So I think Tom's rambling around back there adjusting the lights. So we were busy preparing food. I really did feel like company was coming up until the very last minute. The only thing that was different is you guys couldn't come early because you couldn't show up until we got on camera. So, I mean, at the last minute, I was still doing things. Yeah, a few folks were waiting for us, though, when we showed up, Deb and Sherry and Amber, or and Kat, I think they were all online before we even turned on okay. the feed. Well, so. thank you guys for being patient. You know, it takes a few minutes for us to actually get online once we've decided to go live. So we appreciate you guys coming and showing up for this, and we appreciate your patience. So if you like this video, if you could click like, that really helps our ratings. So we appreciate that. So if you were coming over for one of those meals with me, one thing that I would do during the cooler months is I would give you some soup. So if you subscribe to my blog at nutmakenotebook.com, subscribers get two exclusive recipes that are only for subscribers. And one is for this curry ginger butternut squash soup. And it is fabulous. I have so many people that send me emails or they leave me comments on Facebook and they tell me that it is a soup that they're making every week or every two weeks and their entire family loves it. So you can serve it a, a few different ways. So one fun thing to do is to serve it up in mugs. So as everybody's coming in and you know, if it's the cooler weather, they're a little bit chilly, then you can give them a mug of this hot soup because it's a blended soup. It's creamy and delicious and so soothing. And you can take and grate just a little bit of fresh nutmeg over the top. This is my microplane grater for nutmeg and it does a great job and then they don't even need a spoon they can just sip it mm. it's so good do you want to taste sure it's so creamy and yummy you guys are going to love it 
Okay, mm. so that's kind of fun because that yeah. gives them something warm, kind of takes the edge off their hunger. And if you have last minute things to do, which I usually do when we're entertaining, then it allows you to have some extra time in the kitchen. And everybody wants to gather in the kitchen, right? Even if you're trying to get everything made, that is just the heart of the home. And that's where everybody wants to be. So if you don't want to serve it up in the mugs, what you can do is you can serve it as a first course. And so you just put it in a bowl. You can put a little bit of chives, fresh chives on top because they're gonna get a spoon so they can eat it that way. We also love that served up, that soup served up with wild rice. So you can put wild, to make it heartier, you can put wild rice in the bottom of the bowl, ladle your soup on top, and then you can chop up some fresh arugula and sprinkle that over the top of the soup. And oh, it is so delicious. And that makes it more of a meal, but you can also, you can serve that to company and everybody loves it because it's something a little bit different, something that they're not eating on a regular basis and it's very satisfying and filling. So that will be our soup course then. Then we're moving on to salad. And if you follow me, you know that I love to make chopped salads. What is a chopped salad? Well, you just take your leafy green salad that you would normally make, but you put it in, there's different ways to chop it. We use a 15 inch Holland wood bowl, but there's other ways. You can do it in a food processor. If you're really careful, you can do it on a big cutting board with a big sharp knife and chop it up that way. Or there's an OXO bowl that you can get and a mezzaluna knife. Let me show you the mezzaluna because some people don't know what that is. So it's just a cutting knife that looks like this and you can see how it's half of a circle. And so in a wood bowl, you can just chop really well with this and you chop the salad up pretty fine. And the reason you wanna do that is it tastes so much better when it's all chopped up. So I also chop my little salad tomatoes in there and some red onion and I have a whole video on how to make salads. And then I have a whole video on how to chop a salad in a wood bowl or how to chop a salad without a wood bowl. So you'll check those out. Maybe Tom can link to those for you as well. So I do different things with the chopped salad and you can change what goes on top of it after you've chopped it, depending on the season. So right now, what I'm really loving is my chopped salad with apple and this is the sweet tango apple. They're really delicious, any kind of apple that you like, except I wouldn't use something as tart as a green apple, but a sweeter apple goes well in this. And then this also has the little mandarin oranges, and I like to cut those in half. And then for the croutons, what I do is I take a Japanese sweet potato, and maybe you don't know what that is. Let me grab one. And I pre-bake them, and I have a video all about that, how to bake them. So let me grab one for you, because we batch cook around here, so we usually have all kinds of things in our fridge. So this is a Japanese sweet potato. It's kind of a, a purplish color on the outside, and then I should just, I'll just break it open so you can see. And then on the inside, you can see it's kind of a cream color. These are so sweet and delicious. They're absolutely amazing. So we always bake up a batch of these at the beginning of the week, and I eat one every day. So I always make sure I have at least seven of these in the fridge already baked. So I take that cold sweet potato that's already been baked, and I cut it up, and I put it in my air fryer and I don't preheat the air fryer, but I set it to 400 degrees and I leave that sweet, those sweet potato pieces in there for 20 minutes and they get all crispy on the outside and then they're ooey gooey sweet on the inside and they make the most delicious addition to the salad and I, I call them croutons and they are amazing. They're a lot more fun than the croutons we used to use. They are and a lot healthier and filling too because they're a starch and starch is so filling. So you can chop this salad 
you know, an hour or two before you're going to serve it and then chop up your apple. If you, if you need to do that in, in advance, you can just dip the apple in a little bit of cold water that you've added like a tablespoon or two of fresh lemon juice to and that will keep the apple from turning brown and oxidizing. And then you can go ahead and make your croutons ahead of time and let those cool and then it makes really it looks really beautiful like this i just left it like this because i wanted you to see what it looks like the only dressing that you need for this is a little bit of balsamic vinegar now i love the napa valley naturals grand reserve did i leave that out i did but i didn't put it close enough to grab hang on a sec oh there's that light there's that light that's live that's Tammy's trip light. That is, I, I trip that on that all the time. Okay. I never seem to trip on it. What's going on? I know. Because I don't know. I must hug the corner closer than you do. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. This is Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve Vinegar, and it is a very sweet, syrupy vinegar. It is not like a regular balsamic, so it's very important to find one that is 4% acidity instead of six, which normally vinegars are 6%. And this is sold at Whole Foods and Sprouts and some health food yeah. stores. Do you have a question? Oh, no, when you're done with this salad, okay. uh, we're, we're getting requests to hold the salad up for more of a close-up. Okay, so. sure, sure. So this works really well. Um, I was recently visiting my parents in Nebraska and I made this salad every day and they helped me eat it every day that we were there. And after I left, my mom started making it every day. It is so delicious. Okay, so it's really good with that balsamic. And then I also love California balsamics Simply Lemon, and this is very light. It's a uh, white balsamic, so it has a lighter flavor, and it goes really well with this salad, and it's amazing. And we can link to California Balsamics for you. It is a small family-owned company out of Ukiah, California, and if you place an order with them, if you put my name, Tammy Kramer, or Nutmeg Notebook in the comment section at checkout, they will include two free samples for you. I don't have an affiliate affiliation with them. I just really love their products and they're great people. So I'm happy to help promote them. And if you know what two flavors you'd like to try, you can put that in the comment section too, and they'll include the flavors that you want to try. Okay. So I'm going to hold that salad up. Yeah. And you can look on the screen how close, or maybe you want me to let me see. You go see if I'm close enough. Yeah, I'll, we'll come a little bit closer. Okay, you make so, it closer so that you guys can see. So just so you know, we made a video of me making that salad, and Tom hopes to have it up by yeah. the weekend. Yeah, we will have, we have an a, instruction video on that one. Yeah, top to we bottom. have a whole instruction video coming for you, and I show you how to make the Japanese sweet potato croutons and everything. So I, I wouldn't put the vinegar on until right before I'm getting ready to serve it. Then I would put the vinegar on and then I would give this a toss. And if I was serving more than like four or six people, I would double this because they will come back for more. This is absolutely delicious. Even people who don't think they really like salads, they love this salad. So, and you will too. It, it's my favorite and I've been eating it every day for several weeks. Now, as the weather changes and the fresh fruit changes, you can change this up. You can do this with strawberries and blueberries and <clears throat> raspberries. It's delicious with that. You could do it with pineapple. I mean, you know, pears and pineapple, that would be a delicious combination. So just depends on what's available, what time of year it is, but the chopped salads are a huge, huge hit. So um, you can even add some uh, frozen corn, let it thaw and add frozen corn to it too. And that's really pretty and super, super delicious. Okay, so now for the main event, what we love in our family is a shepherd's pie. What is a shepherd's pie? Well, it's a two layer savory pie. So for us whole food plant-based eaters, we use lentils in the base 
instead of meat, of course. And my daughter said to make sure that I tell you all that this is the best dish to take if you have a potluck to go to or you get invited to someone else's home and you're allowed to bring something because it includes the mashed potatoes for us. So it's an entire meal for those of us who eat whole food plant based or when you're entertaining, it's the perfect dish to make because you can make things up ahead of time and then assemble it at the last minute and pop it in the oven. So we love it for the convenience. It's very easy to make and it's super delicious. So today what I did is I have a recipe on the blog for my hearty lentil vegetable stew. Super popular recipe. It's a family favorite and everyone that I make it for loves it. I made it for, we teach a, a weight loss class here in the Sacramento, California area. And I recently made it for our class. They loved it. A bunch of them went home and made it that very week because it makes a ton and it's delicious. Well, for the past year, I've been thinking that stew would make a great base for a shepherd's pie. And then a friend of mine, Colleen Collins, Colleen, if you're watching, hi, she sent me a note on Facebook and said, I used your stew. I reduced it down and let it get a little thicker and used it for a shepherd's pie. And I said, oh my gosh, that, that is something I've been wanting to do for the past year. So today was the day. So instead of making the recipe and reducing it down, what I did was I just changed the recipe up. So I, you know, cut it, cut the recipe way down because it usually makes about eight quarts. So I cut the recipe down, but I left the seasonings as is. The change that I did make in the filling, instead of putting Yukon Gold potatoes in the filling, which that's how the stew is made, I used sweet potatoes in the filling since I was going to be making mashed potatoes for the top. And it turned out great. And for the potatoes, I used my garlic mashed potatoes that you make in the Instant Pot. But I just, is this good, Tom? Can they see it? Um, yeah, you can see it. It's under. really heavy. You won't be able to do it one-handed, honey. Is that heavy? Yeah. Yes. So this is... There, that's, that's close enough. Yeah, that's good. You can see on the on the screen over there, I have set okay. up for you. Yeah, thank you. I just wasn't sure if people could see it good or not. So my garlic mashed potatoes are really easy. Um, I don't know that we'll get a video up before Thanksgiving on how to make this, but I will do a blog post for you because I took really good notes today. Yeah, we're, we're being asked about that. Um, yeah, I took hope really... You share, uh, I Tiffany's will. Tiffany's hoping we'll share their shepherd's pie recipe. And then, Absolutely. And then also there was a question about the salad video probably Saturday morning yes. to be realistic. Yeah, on the weekend. He should have the salad video up by the weekend. I have detailed... Um, description of it on my Instagram and my Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page because I've been eating it every day for weeks and so I've been posting about it every day on there and some people are making it and loving it as much as I do. So the the recipe for the shepherd's pie, I will get it up. It'll probably take me a week, but it'll definitely be up before Thanksgiving so that you guys can make it for Thanksgiving. If I make it in a 9 by 13 pan and as you can see, and it's very um, dense, so this will, this will probably feed, I would say that you could feed eight people or 10, just depends on how big of eaters they are. People a lot of times go back for seconds for this. So if I was feeding more than, like more than eight people, I would make two of them. And um, just to make sure that you have enough. I took a shepherd's pie to uh, our family Thanksgiving last year, and even the people who don't eat plant-based were taking it and, and loving it because it's just so hearty and it's comfort food and it's absolutely delicious. I baked it in my Breville Smart Oven Air, which is a toaster oven and an air fryer, and it's right back there. And it holds a nine by 13 pan, which is great because then I don't have to heat up my whole kitchen, which I really like. So. I also make the filling in the in an instant pot. So you know, I have multiple instant pots. So I had potatoes going in one and the filling going in the other. If you only have one instant pot, then I would make the filling first, take it out, put it in your pan, 
wash the pot, and then cook your mashed potatoes because the filling in the mashed potatoes don't take very long, it's very quick, and it's easy to make it that way. Now, what I did today was I did still a little bit of that filling and a little bit of the mashed potatoes, and I made a little sampler for Tom and I. We're gonna open that one up. We are. Because you still so need good. to take blog photos, blog post photos of that one. I do still need to. Oh, I should, I should have gotten a photo of this little one too. So if you were just entertaining like four to six people, it would be really fun to take and make little individual shepherd's pies, which would be cute. You can get a picture. With you in it, sure. Okay. Okay. All right. And then one close up. Yeah. There you go. Okay, we're nice. good. Nice, now we can take a bite. Here's a fork for you. Here's a fork for me. Now, of course, I did taste everything while I was making it. You have to know that. But it is so, so if good. I take a oh my gosh. strategic bite, we're gonna get layers, but yeah. we exposed the layering. So, well, let's see. Can you guys see? Yeah, they oh can see, gosh. it's a potato. It's, I know, it's so good. Mm. Delicious. Okay. okay, so you take this mm. before I lose my potatoes here. Oh, you guys, it's so good. The filling is savory, but a little bit of, little sweet mm -hmm. from the sweet potatoes. It's really, really good. So, so you could do little individual ones, or you can just do the great big one. If you have one of those carry bags that has the um, little, uh, what do you call it, the little packet that comes that you heat it, heat it up in the microwave, you know, or if you have a, um, a brick that goes in the oven to keep things hot, then you can put that underneath your casserole and just cover the top with some foil and it'll stay nice and hot to get you to wherever you're going. So it's very transportable, which makes it super easy and fun to do. Another idea, now these can either be uh, a side dish or it can be your main entree. And this is acorn squash that is stuffed with a curry, oh, no, not curry, with a quinoa <laughs> filling. The reason I'm saying curry is because I have a recipe on the blog for a curry quinoa stuffed acorn squash. I took that recipe, but instead of using curry today, instead I used poultry seasoning and just to see how that would taste. The poultry seasoning does not have any poultry in it, so don't get worried. It has like um, marjoram, rosemary, and thyme, and it's all nice, savory. A little bit, it has a little bit of nutmeg in it. And I add garbanzo beans to it to make it more filling. It has a chopped apple in it. It also has some dried fruit in it. You can leave the dried fruit out if you don't use dried fruit, but for the holiday meal, I think it's kind of fun to have some dried fruit. Today, I used golden raisins because that's what I happen to have on hand. If you had the dark sweet cherries from Trader Joe's that are unsweetened, those would work beautifully. I would just take and chop those up a little bit. Apricots would be lovely in this as well. I cooked everything in my instant you know, pot. Yeah, that's so pretty. I should, when you're ready, I'll go around and, and let everybody lean in on that okay. for a close up. Sure. And so, what I did was I roasted some squash. I just, you know, cut it in half. Well, actually, Tom cut them in half for me. Because and, I'm strong. Because you're strong. Because I'm nice. And nice. And helpful. And because you wanted wow. to eat some too, I bet. <laughs> And so I just roasted them in a 400 degree oven, cut in half with all the seeds scooped out. I put the cut side down. Um, sometimes they'll get a little caramelized, but I was doing, I had other things cooking in there at the same time. So it didn't get real caramely, but you don't need any oil. Just know that it will cook beautifully with the cut side down without oil. And then I just took it out and uh, waited for my filling to get done, which I cooked in the Instant Pot. And, you know, quinoa in the Instant Pot only takes about five minutes. So it's the perfect way to do it. I just threw everything in, the onions and the celery and the apple and the dried fruit. I just put it all in there. And then when it was in the seasoning, and then when it was done cooking, then I added garbanzo beans and in the curry recipe that I have, I add chopped spinach, but I didn't have any spinach today, but I had arugula, so I chopped up some fresh arugula to add in it. If you had parsley, 
some Italian parsley, you could use that as well. Or if you had some fresh herbs that you prefer to use, you could certainly add fresh herbs to it. So what we did was, this is a small acorn squash that we filled. These would be really cute and adorable as an individual. individual one. Then I also did the delicata squash. I just love how cute those are. They're like a little boat. And those are adorable. And you could make those. Those could be little side dishes for people and they're super cute or you could cut them in half on the platter and so people could take a half of one this was a giant acorn squash and you know when trader joe's has the acorn squash and it's the same price because it's all per piece instead of per pound i just buy the biggest one that i can find in the pile and so you know this would like feed a man this would be his whole meal but we could cut that in half and we could share it and so these are really fun. They're pretty. Of course, I topped them off with some fresh pomegranate seeds. I'm kind of lazy when it comes to pomegranates because I don't like having to cut them open and clean them and get them out. And we ran to the store this morning to look for uh, pomegranate seeds that were already ready to go and we couldn't find any so i had to buy a pomegranate and i came home and i watched my friend shada uh, did a video recently on healthy cooking with shada she has a youtube channel and a facebook page so it's healthy cooking with shada and she did a video earlier this week or late last week on how to get the pomegranate seeds out and it was the easiest and most successful way i have ever used so look her up and find that yes a couple of questions where yes. did the uh, poultry season what poultry seasoning what brand what store did you get it do you, do you recall where it came from don't think i left it out let me grab it okay you can just and, find it at the regular grocery store all right or then, if you can't find it look online and there's recipes to make it yourself so this is just mccormick's poultry seasoning and i think i got this like at safeway probably so and most grocery stores have it it is a blend of thyme sage marjoram rosemary black pepper and nutmeg. And they may not all have the exact same ingredients, but also if you just Google it, look online, you will find recipes to make a small amount yourself if you can't find it in a grocery store. But it was just easy to use the poultry seasoning and um, have it all already measured and um, ready to go. And then a general question, because we talked about the salad, we know that that's coming up as a, as a blog post, full recipe mm -hmm. and demonstration video. Saturday um, and what? the shepherd's pie will do before Thanksgiving okay. and I also if you go to the blog on the blog is the curry quinoa stuffed acorn squash recipe so that's already up yeah and curry, this quinoa stuffed curry quinoa stuffed acorn squash and this was pretty much the same except I added some celery um, I may have added a little more onion. I have to look at my notes, but it's pretty much the same recipe, except that instead of curry powder, I added the poultry seasoning. So, so, so take out the and curry you do and it, sub in poultry and follow that recipe. So yeah. if they go to search in and the just, recipe drop down on the blog, they can search. Uh, yeah. If you just do a search, it, in fact, you can just put it in Google. This is probably the easiest way to do it is go to Google and put in, curry quinoa stuffed acorn squash nutmeg, nutmeg notebook. notebook and google will bring it right and to your google, desktop yep yeah. and google should bring it right up for you and then so instead of the curry powder i used i used a teaspoon and a half of the poultry seasoning but yeah. i would say do it to your taste so i did a teaspoon before i cooked it and then i tasted it after i cooked it and i didn't think it had a strong enough flavor so i added another half teaspoon of this but you know flavoring is a very personal thing so it's all about personal preference yeah virginia so, likes the curry version she's already made it so she will certainly and it's just make it it's, with the poultry season yes and it's it's so beautiful when you add the pomegranate seeds to it it's so pretty now if you do cranberries 
dried cranberries, but it's very hard to find dried cranberries that don't have added sugar or oil to them. Um, but you know, it, that's why I like to use the pomegranate seeds because it adds a lot of color and makes it more appealing. And you know, they say we eat with our eyes. So we want that to be very pretty. I also, on the blog, I have a recipe for stuffing it with a Mexican filling that's also really delicious and tasty, but you know, not Thanksgiving-ish. Any more questions before I move on? Oh, I was just smiling because Kay was say, if I taped the cord down on that light, you wouldn't kick it, but you didn't trip on the cord, you kicked I, the light. I, I tripped <laughs> so, on the light. Great idea, Kay, I probably should. No, it's, but, he sets it here every time, and every time that we record, I trip over it. So you would think eventually I would get that going. Okay, so let's move on to the Brussels sprouts. So these would be a lot prettier if I added some color. Oh, you're messing with the, <laughs> messing with the it dishes. It needs a little color. Uh, but they don't look pretty, but they're so delicious. Did you just take one? No, I, took I, one of those? I just ate a, okay. a pomegranate. So these are the Brussels sprouts recipe that are from Chef AJ's book. And they're the ones with the Dijon mustard and the um, Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve mixed together. So you do equal amounts. So this, I did two pounds of raw Brussels sprouts that I cut in half. And then I mixed up two tablespoons of mustard with two tablespoons, no, four tablespoons of mustard, because I did two pounds, four tablespoons of mustard with four tablespoons of the Grand Reserve vinegar, because you want that thick, syrupy, sweet vinegar. And you can use Dijon mustard, or if you don't, if you're following a low sodium diet, then you can use the no salt added mustard, and I'll show you what that is. You can get this online. We have it on our Amazon page. Some grocery stores carry it. Our Sprouts, which is like a kind of a health food grocery store, carries it. But if you can't find it locally, you can buy it on Amazon. And we have our Amazon affiliate page where we post, you know, all kinds of stuff that we use in our kitchen from appliances to seasonings to, I don't know, what else? Some hiking stuff and even things for the grandkids. So you, Tom can link to that and you can check that out. So then you just have the, the Brussels sprouts. I put them in a big bowl. Then I take the four tablespoons of vinegar, the four tablespoons of mustard, mix that together, pour that over, stir them really good, and then line a baking sheet, a rimmed baking sheet with either parchment paper or a Silpat mat and spread them out put them in a hot 400 degree oven. And I roasted these for about 45 minutes because we like them to be really done. And they are so sweet and so delicious. Even people who don't like Brussels sprouts like these. They are so good and they are almost candy-like because that balsamic vinegar is so sweet. I mean, you just, you hardly know that these are Brussels sprouts but they're super delicious and they make a fun little side dish. So you can see already, we're, we're gonna be plenty full, right? With, with all of this food. Then I wanted to show you something that you can do because I, I think, you know, and for the winter months, well, we eat sweet potatoes all year long, but they're definitely in abundance in the grocery stores in the winter months. This is a Hannah yam and you can see it kind of, just looks a little bit like a Yukon gold as far as the skin color. And then the flesh is creamy like the Japanese sweet potatoes. And I like to bake these, put them in the fridge, then when they're cold, cut them in half. And then I don't know if you can see, I've scored it. I go diagonally one way and then cut it diagonally the other way. And then I like to put them under the air fryer. 400 degrees, again, 20 minutes. The skin gets all crispy, the top caramelizes, Sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on there, either before or after you put them in the air fryer. These can be a side dish. These can be dessert. Now in the Breville, I can do probably um, a dozen of the halves, so six of these sweet potatoes. And so if I was having a dozen people over, everybody would get to have a half. 
Then what you do after you've air fried it is you take one of the sweet vinegars. Now this is California balsamic, the peach white balsamic vinegar, and you just drizzle a tiny little bit. It doesn't, you don't pour it. You just want to drizzle it over the top of that. It is an amazing side dish or an amazing dessert so, even. So here we call that the Hannah Nam. The Hannah we call it the Hannah Yam. Yam. Yes. Uh, um, and so what else are they called? Um, um, yeah, what's the name of the yam again? Please. This is a Hannah Yam is what it's called in our grocery stores. You can also do this with the Japanese sweet potatoes as well. You can also do it with the regular garnets too. We just happen to like these better, but you can also do it with your garnets. Um, what are some of the other orange ones called? I can't even think right now besides garnets, but you know, you can do it with any kind of sweet potato. There's purple sweet potatoes. There, you can do it with any of them. We like the Hannah's. The Hannah's are not as sweet as the Japanese. The Japanese are actually sweeter than these. It, watch my video that's all about potatoes. Can you link to that one? Yeah, it's it, Tuesday with Tammy number four, all about potatoes. I'll yeah. put a link in the, in the description. Watch that one because I show you all the different kinds of sweet potatoes that we buy and I tell you how we make them. And but, so, Bella, that video will give you all the times and temperatures. Go to minute mm -hmm. 12. And that video, and Tammy, it's 400 degrees uh, is the temperature that we bake all the potatoes at and sweet potatoes, but the times vary based on the type of potato. So uh, Tuesday with Tammy, number four in our library, and minute number 12 talks about time and temperature. And he knows that because we get asked about potatoes so much that that's why we did a video all about potatoes for you guys. But this is a beautiful presentation. You, if you want to make a, like a large batch of sweet potatoes to serve a large group, this is the way to do it. And these are delicious. And if people have never tried anything, any kind of sweet potato other than the traditional orange garnets, they will be amazed at how delicious the Hannah's and the Japanese are. But the Japanese are actually my favorite, the purple ones. These are my favorite because these are even sweeter than the Hannah's, but they're all delicious. And so instead of a sweet potato casserole, all you need to do is bake these ahead of time, let them chill in the refrigerator, and then air fry them. And they are amazing. And people are just amazed at how delicious they are. And so it makes a beautiful presentation when you cut them on the diagonal, they kind of look like a, a pineapple. And then if you set out a whole platter of those and then drizzle them with a little bit of a sweet balsamic, it's to die for. And everybody will love that. And nobody will miss those yucky ones with the marshmallows and all of that. Okay, so now you can see we've, we have a lot of food, right? Because imagine your plate with some of the salad, some of the shepherd's pie, some of the Brussels sprouts. You might have a little bit of one of these stuffed squash. You could have a sweet potato. I mean, you already will have had your soup. You're going to be full. And we're not finished yet. And we're we? not finished yet. So this is really though, I have to say, it. When it comes to the holiday, and we get the whole family here, this is an amazing holiday meal. Mm -hmm. and, and there's other things that come and go, but um, but our family is absolutely thrilled with the holiday spread that Tammy does put on. Mm -hmm. and, and nobody complains about traditions we may have had in the past because they just don't pertain to our lives anymore. No. Well, so. when we get together with our extended family, and some of them uh, still eat the standard American diet, and they will have some of their traditional things that they still like, but they'll still try all of our food and we respect that how they choose to eat and they respect how we choose to eat and it's a total non-issue. Um, you know, we just, we're all about getting together and sharing a meal and having fun and just being together and our uh our, and our stuff always gets wiped out because it's good <laughs> it does always get wiped out because they i mean like i said good food is good food it doesn't matter if it's healthy as long as it tastes good good food is just good food so um so it's fun and then our son-in-law his sister annie annie if you're watching hi annie 
she always makes us a vegan turkey every year for Thanksgiving. And I'll out post of. out of fruit. And so she'll use like a butternut squash or a cantaloupe for the base and a pear for its head. And then she, she will put beautiful fruit on skewers that represent its tail feathers. And she makes that for us every year because she said, this is my turkey for my vegan family. And we love that. And it's beautiful and everybody helps us eat it and it's fun and it's festive and I'll, I'll post a picture. I'll, I'll at least get it on Instagram and Facebook so you guys can see it because it is absolutely adorable. So um, we uh, always look forward to that. A question about air frying the squash. You air fry squash sometimes. We. No, I no. usually oven roast it. Okay. I like to oven roast the squash. I have taken some delicata and cut it before and put it in the air fryer, but it's pretty delicate. It's I just, a little less dense than the, than the sweet potatoes, so yes, it doesn't hold its... It has more it, water. So it gives up too much water and shrinks down. It shrinks yeah. down quite a bit. I mean, you could probably air fry it. I, you know, it was just okay when I did that with the delicata, but I only did it once, so I haven't experimented with that a lot. But I do have, if you look up, like you can Google um, kabocha squash, nutmeg notebook and I have a whole blog post on how to make it easy to cut those tough winter squashes and how to oven roast them because they're delicious. Okay, so then we need dessert, right? Well, of course you can do fruit. Fruit is amazing and you know, it always uh, is incredible to me how much people love fresh fruit because a lot of people don't eat it on a regular basis so at a holiday buffet or a holiday meal, it's like a really big treat for them. So, you know, take whatever fruit is in season. And then I always like to add some fresh pineapple, which we are very fortunate in the United States that we, you know, get fresh pineapple delivered to our grocery stores every week. So I think, you know, it, the acid in the pineapple helps all the other fruits from turning brown and oxidizing and it adds a lot of sweetness and then you can add whatever fruits are available seasonally. Wouldn't that turkey picture already be on your Nutmeg Notebook Facebook timeline about one year ago? It should be. If they, if they can go to your timeline on Nutmeg. Yeah, I'll post, I can post a picture though okay. for people to see. Yeah. But yeah, it yeah, probably you, you is there. You would have posted it Thanksgiving I last year. Have. She would have pictures on the Nutmeg Notebook Facebook uh, feed, but I, sh I think I do. If you looked at a year ago, I don't know how much scrolling that would be. That, that would be, be a lot, lot of scrolling. scrolling. <laughs> It'd be easier to look on my Instagram account. So nutmeg notebook on Instagram It would be much easier to find it on there. And hopefully I took a picture of it, but if not, I'll, I'll find the picture on my phone and we'll send that up. So this is one of our favorite desserts and we can eat this year round. This is called fall pudding. I have one for you too. Oh, well, thank you. I know you're welcome. So I was so excited that I got to make this today because it's super delicious here. Maybe I can get closer so you guys can see. Now this is just, this is not my recipe. This was developed by, um, I always butcher her name, but May Reed Reddy. And she is a fellow participant in Chef AJ's ultimate weight loss program. And she allowed me to put the recipe on my blog. So I call it fall pudding because that's what she called it. It's also in Chef AJ's newest book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. And she calls it butterscotch pudding. All it is is oven roasted sweet potatoes or garnet yams and very sweet, very ripe bananas, pumpkin pie spice. And this is my favorite pumpkin pie spice from local spicery, which is local to us here in Marysville, California is the closest one to us. So if you go to localspicery.com and if you put Nutmeg Notebook in the comment section on the checkout, they will send you two free samples of their delicious spices. They mill them themselves. They're super fresh. They're amazing. They have the best flavor of any spices you could buy. So I, again, I don't have an affiliate with them. I just love the 
the couple that runs local spicery and I love their products so I'm happy to help promote them so check that out so you just put this in the blender a little bit of vanilla powder a little bit of pumpkin pie spice the recipe is on the blog it makes the most delicious creamy pudding it's amazing so we like it plain just like this you can also you can garnish it it's so pretty if you put a little bit of pomegranate seeds on it sometimes i will use um, some fresh raspberries it just depends on what i can find but isn't that cute also last year what i did was i made a little bit of granola so kathy fisher has a blog called straight up food and she has a no oil granola recipe on there that's fantastic it does have nuts but it, the nuts are optional you can leave the nuts out you just roast it in bake it in the oven and so what i did last year was i got some cute little dessert dishes and i put the put fall pudding in there and then i topped it with that granola and everybody loved it and i just made small little containers of it for everyone so that you know if they still wanted one of the traditional desserts they would still have room for a little bit of the fall pudding so kids love this they don't even know that it's sweet potatoes everybody thinks it's pumpkin because it tastes like pumpkin pie and it's super delicious and as you can see you can serve it up to be really really cute if you have a pie crust that you like you could make a pie crust like one of the oat and make date and pie. whoa one of the oat and date ones would be really good to put it in i would just make it really really make sure it's really really thick when you put it in there and chill it well so that when you cut it into slices it will stay i have made pie out of it before i prefer it actually just in a dessert dish with the little bit of fruit and it's super super delicious uh amber yes. amber wants to try the pudding we could use a really long straw <laughs> um question from yes. um about the relish or not the relish the cranberry do you have I don't recall that you have a cranberry relish and somewhere you've done these and then I don't believe so these aren't the these are pomegranate pomegranate um, is she asking about a cranberry relish I'm gonna reread the question okay yeah no she is yeah Diane Diane uh -huh. Diane is asking if you have a cranberry relish recipe and if so how do you sweeten it yes I don't because most of them require way too much dried fruit if you're not using sugar and the ones that call for sugar I just wouldn't make but I can tell you that chef AJ does have one and I believe it has oranges in it and it might have apple and I have made it and it's very delicious so you use fresh cranberries and um, I think if you google it she probably has the recipe on a video and it also might be in her book the secrets to ultimate weight loss because that has over a hundred recipes in it um where is that cookbook oh it's over there on the table so you could look and see cranberry relish um, i use her cookbook all the time so it's one of our favorites it is full of delicious salt oil sugar flour and alcohol free recipes that you can feed to anyone and they will love them so there is a yeah look yeah, and index. see if there's and we, and we do have this on um, amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash not make no book it's in there in the books oh i have one more salad to show i just realized hey something's missing ta-da sometimes that happens at dinner too sometimes that happens at dinner too so this is another salad this is the bodacious beet salad that's also in chef aj's book it's actually a recipe of my friend Shada, who I was telling you about earlier, who has a YouTube channel called Healthy Living with Shada and also a Facebook page, Healthy Living with Shada. So be sure and check her out. And this was her original recipe. So this is beets, cooked beets and mango. I bought the love beets at Costco that are already cooked and peeled and they're organic. I bought frozen organic mango because when we were at 
Costco and we were at Sam's Club. That almost looks like a dessert. I know. Neither mm. one of them had um, mm. fresh mango. And so I just used frozen, organic frozen mm. mango that I had. And then some fresh mint. And AJ calls for making one of her salad dressings to use on it. But I just used a little bit of the balsamic vinegar because it really, it doesn't need a whole lot. So I just drizzled a little bit of this balsamic vinegar, the Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve over it. And this makes a beautiful, delicious salad. And like Tom said, it's almost like dessert because between the, the beets when they're cooked are very sweet, although uh, they do have that earthy flavor. And then the mango is sweet and the mint. It's absolutely delicious and people love it. And it's very festive looking as well. Can you believe I almost forgot that? But I've done that at dinners too. I, at the last minute go, oh my gosh, I forgot to get something. You know, it's usually like in the garage fridge or something and I've forgotten it. So the recipe for this is also in that book. Did you find, was there a cranberry relish? Yeah, except Whisper beat me to it. I, I typed in cranberry relish page 216 and I looked up and uh, uh, was, Whisper and Jesse already had that. So oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so AJ has that cranberry relish recipe and it is... It is good. Oh, and Alyssa so, had that before there. So yeah, we're tuned in. Okay, we're doing great. Good. So I might have to try and make one for you guys. So we have a family traditional one that we made for years. My daughter usually makes it now because it has sugar in it. And so I don't make it and I don't eat it. But I could try that and see if I could replicate that and maybe use date syrup or use dates in it instead because it modify yours yeah because yeah, it it was delicious with allspice in it and um some cinnamon I may and have tasted apples it last year. did you eat it I last year you may have he probably did so because it's super delicious but so is this salad we should have invited somebody over for dinner tonight because we have all this food we have all this food it's crazy okay I'm going to set that there. Does that still show? Yeah, that's still showing. Well, we needed to have some holiday food. We because needed to? Because the holidays are coming, yeah. <laughs> We're prepared now. Well, honey, this isn't going to last <laughs> till Thanksgiving. Okay. okay, so then the other thing I wanted to say is I talked to you about doing some fresh fruit because um, when we have our get-togethers, everybody just knows I'm not going to eat the baked dessert of, you know, a traditional baked dessert. And so even if our daughter, who's a wonderful baker and she's plant-based, so even if she makes something traditional, I'm gluten-free, I'm oil-free. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a, a hard um, person to think of something that, that they can have if you don't eat exactly the way I do. So we always have fresh fruit and everybody enjoys the fresh fruit, which is really fun because I, you know, then I don't feel like I'm the only one who's not getting um, to have what everybody else is having because they all share the fresh fruit. Everybody always loves having these little easy peel mandarins. So we, you can buy these now year round because they're, they're coming from some country all year long, it seems. So we always put a big dish of these out and they're always well received. Everybody loves them from you know the kids to the grown-ups. So that works well. And then whatever other fruit happens to be in season. So it's fun to do something that's a little bit different. Can you grab a persimmon from over there, Tom? So just look at the store. When you go to the store, whether you shop at the grocery store or the farmer's market, or you go to uh, Costco or Sam's Club, look and see what they have that's a little bit different. And it's fun to just do, do a platter of some unusual fruits that maybe other people haven't had before. So, you know, there's all kinds of tropical things that you can try. There's dragon fruit and star fruit. And a lot of people have never even had kiwis. And so, you know, just look in the produce section. Or if you go to a grocery store that caters to either the Hispanic population or the Asian population, they'll usually have a wide variety of fruits that maybe your regular grocery store doesn't have. So these are persimmons and a lot of people have never tried a persimmon and these are delicious. Once they get ripe, 
I, and then and it this one's pretty hard so it's not ready to eat yet but once it gets ripe i like to slice them really thin and i like to add them to my the top of my chopped salads they're so delicious that way if they get really really ripe then i like to take and put it in the freezer and let it get nice and frozen and then when you take it out it's it's almost like a sorbet and you can just eat it with a spoon and it is amazingly sweet and delicious. So think about making up a beautiful platter of some unusual fruits to take either to a party or a, a holiday get together or a potluck or when you're entertaining in your own home. So if you guys have questions about entertaining or other things that you could make, just ask them and we'll try to answer them. Uh, Kay Pella was asking on- Hi, Kay. On the cinnamon, uh, this local spice. I know, I remember he has multiple kinds of cinnamon. Yes, and, and we Kay have- talked about that. We have a video from local spicery and, that we did. Do you remember which one that would be It's in? in the first video. Um, so we have three videos about local spicery. In the very first video that we did with him, he talks all about cinnamon and he talks about all the questions that people have about cinnamon. And I think it's it's yeah. pretty close to the front of that video. So watch that. Yeah, and a com I'll comment to all of you folks viewing now. Those videos are, they're almost more like documentaries about the spice world. Mm -hmm. uh, we broke them up into three because one was a general interview. And then uh, the second interview was all about, you know, salt-free spices. Uh, that he put together for our plant-based SOS community. And then another, another one was even more information, including teas and a tour of the facility. But Nick is such a wealth of information. Not a lot of people are watching those videos as it relates to some of our you know, recipe-oriented videos. But everybody that has watched them comes back and leaves a comment about how awesome and informative mm -hmm. and surprisingly interesting that those videos were. Mm -hmm. So. Don't be afraid to, when you've got some time, because they're, they're longer, but it, Nick is just a walking encyclopedia of the history of spices, global markets, uh, use of spices, different kinds of spices within spice families. I was amazed at how much information, and that's why we wound up with uh, you know, way more than I intended in our original visit up there to do the, the interview and the tour. But, you know, not a lot of folks are watching those, but when they do, they are coming away with, very satisfied with having spent mm -hmm. the time with them. So I encourage you to take a look. Yeah, Nick and Evelyn are lovely people. They uh, run local spicery. So please watch those videos and because he tells the history behind the spices and just, oh, it's just so interesting. So interesting. Okay, so let's back. I, I've been trying to kind of catch you with questions. So okay. gonna, uh, we'll scan from the bottom up okay. here. Um, let's see. Uh, do you make any dressing or stuffing? I don't because bread. Uh, yeah. because we don't eat bread products. So I don't. But I'm sure if you just Google um, vegan dressing or vegan stuffing, you'll you'll find a lot of recipes for that. And if you're no oil or or you have you know specific dietary requirements, Google that and see what you can come up with. And I know that Fat-Free Vegan Kitchen is a wonderful resource for all kinds of low-fat recipes. And then uh, my other favorite other blog to go to is Kathy Fisher's Straight Up Food. And she has an amazing cookbook that's also one of my favorite cookbooks and that's this one here and we have this on our amazon uh affiliate page as well and did you post a link to that to our amazon page I will. in the description yeah. yeah in the description tom will post a link to it so when you guys use our amazon affiliate page you help support our work because you know we do everything for free and that gives us a little bit of pocket change if you use our Amazon affiliate page because we get a little bit of a commission when you use it, but it doesn't cost you anything. But it helps us like buy mics or, you know, put lights. money, yeah. lights or put money towards uh, camera equipment or, or, you know, or pay for groceries when we make a big meal like this for y'all. Somebody should have showed up to eat with us tonight. 
I, seriously, we should have invited the kids to come over because look at this. How are two people going to eat all this? It's crazy. Okay. So, so Kathy Fisher, Straight Up Food. Love her blog. I don't know if she has a dressing recipe or not, but, um, but she might. So check out her blog. And then also um, Susan, I can't think of her last name now, but Fat Free Vegan Kitchen because she has a lot of low-fat recipes. But Tom and I don't eat uh, flour products, and so I'm gluten-free. So, you know, it's just easier just to just not even go there than to try to figure that out. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say we're mostly caught up right now. If you okay. have another question, go ahead and leave it in the comments after the video is done uploading, just in the regular viewing area. Yes, that's a good and, idea. And they're easy for us to spot there, and, and we can catch up with them in the next day or two. And um, Or you can leave us... Um, a question over on our Facebook page. So Nutmeg Notebook on Facebook. So I have a post up about this segment. And so you could just leave a, comment, a yeah. comment there if you have a question that we didn't get to. So the comments that they do while we're live, what happens to those? Because I never, I don't get you to see those. You have to watch the video and it scrolls yeah. through in real time. So when you re, when you rewatch the video, then you'll see them as they come up. Yeah, but I don't always have time to rewatch the video. Yeah, so, so leave them in comments. Uh, after the video. After the video. Yeah, yeah, that'd be better because if you leave a comment, a question now, I probably won't see, see it. it. And I do try to answer everyone. I know that, you know, sometimes things just move so fast that we miss some questions or comments on YouTube or Facebook or um, we try to capture all the ones that we get in our email, but even that sometimes gets hard because you guys are really busy asking a lot of questions, which we really appre appreciate. So here's what, what um, my comments about entertaining for when we're having people over, even if they aren't plant-based eaters, even if they eat the standard American diet, I don't cook any meat anymore. I haven't cooked you know, meat, chicken, fish, anything like that, or any eggs, dairy. or used any dairy or anything since 2013. And so I just don't go there anymore. I just make delicious, beautiful food. I was recently visiting my parents in Nebraska, and I cooked for them while I was there, and they loved everything that I made, and sometimes were surprised I think at how delicious everything was and nobody missed their meat or cheese or or dairy because the food is so delicious now if you prefer to make like a lentil loaf or something like that for the holidays look at my blog I have barbecue lentil loaf muffin recipe on there that are delicious mm -hmm. and they're already pre um, portioned for you because you make them in a muffin pan and I have a silicone muffin pan now so I should try making them in that. Those are delicious and they present beautifully so you could make those barbecue lentil loaf muffins and then you could make the garlic mashed potatoes to go with them. Then you could make the Brussels sprouts and you could make this salad. You could make the chopped salad and that would be a delicious beautiful meal that you could have. If you look on the, the blog and put in Thanksgiving, you'll see there will be a blog post. I think there's two blog posts where I posted about what we made for a couple of Thanksgivings. The older one, like in 2014, I wasn't, um, I was more liberal with my plant-based diet then. And so those are richer recipes that I posted links to. Um, in 2014, but um, the one that I did last year will look more like this. And I posted links to, um, there's a lentil loaf that I made that the original one called for nuts, but I substituted all oats for it and that was delicious. I have that link in that blog post and I can try to post those links on Facebook as well so that you can see what we've done at other times. But we love this. Um, uh, doing a shepherd's pie. This recipe is new, but we love doing a shepherd's pie for entertaining and for our holiday meals. We're out of time. We're out of time. So 
the boss just spoke. <laughs> I think he's really wanting to eat you guys, and so that's why he's like, okay. So, so just you know, um, if you are new to plant based and this is your first holiday season, to either go someplace and taking food or having people over, just know that when the food tastes good, nobody cares that it's plant-based because it tastes good. Now, in our cooking, I don't add salt, but for the holidays, when I'm cooking for other people, especially people who eat the standard American diet, I will go ahead and add a little bit of salt to a recipe if I think it's going to enhance it so that they will like it. Um, I did not add any salt to this, and this doesn't is add, need it. it doesn't not for need us. it because it's so flavorful. The Brussels sprouts don't need salt. Loaded with flavor. This, this is all loaded with this, flavor. This this food is so flavorful from the spices that we've used or the ingredients that we've used in it that none of this needs any salt. And like I say, regular people, regular people will eat it and like it. But I always put the salt and pepper shaker out for anyone who feels the need to salt it. And you know, some people do and some people don't. So just feel confident, use recipes that other people have shown you and talk, talk to you about that they have recommended. So if you follow me and you've tried the recipes that I have on my blog or recipes that I've linked to, recipes I've recommended and you like it, then feel safe about using these recipes um, because we probably share the same taste profile. So once you find someone like I love Chef AJ's food, I love Th Kathy Fisher's food, I like Fat Free Vegan Kitchen's food. So once you find someone who shares the same flavor profiles that you enjoy, then it's a pretty safe bet that if you use their recipes, you're going to like them. So, you know, have fun with it. Remember, it's just one meal. And if everything isn't perfect, that's okay. As long as you have enough food, you know, we always take enough food with us when we go to someone else's home that so we know we will have plenty of food that we like to be able to eat and that it meets our, our health requirements. So anyway, if you have questions, we'll try to answer them for you. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps our ratings here on YouTube. And then YouTube, if we get a lot of thumbs up, then YouTube's more likely to recommend our video to other viewers. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. Then you also need to click on the bell that's right there by the subscribe because that is how you get notifications whenever we do a live or we have a new video up. Also, if you haven't yet joined or subscribed to the blog at nutmegnotebook.com, please hop on over there to nutmegnotebook.com and subscribe because when you subscribe, that's how you get this beautiful curry ginger butternut squash soup recipe and it's the only way you get it. So as soon as you subscribe, and subscribing is free, all you have to do is put in your email address and then you will immediately get an email from Nutmeg Notebook. If you don't see it, then look in your junk folder because it's probably hiding in there and it will have a link to a PDF where you can download or print the recipes that are exclusive to subscribers. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom the <laughs> Troll Hunter at the moment. So I think I caught them all, sorry okay. about that. And we help you get healthy and stay healthy one, one meal, meal at, at a time. time. Thanks for watching you guys. Bye we'll bye. catch you next time. Bye bye. bye. bye.